Hello and welcome to Life in Milwaukee. I'd like to thank everybody for watching Student Operations 2012 so far. I hope everybody's having a great day in front of their television sets. Welcome to my show. My name is James Gale and I'm here to show you a few videos that I've made that seek to explore how young men in their 20s live in Milwaukee. My first video tonight is a video from my friend Derek Krieger. Derek and I went to Brookfield, Wisconsin to see the Midwest Gaming Classic. Here at the Midwest Gaming Classic, we were able to see a wide array of video games and how people in Milwaukee interact with them. Let's take a look. Here we are, Brookfield, Wisconsin. Midwest Gaming Classic, world's largest electronic, all sorts of electronics exposition. We're going to be getting a, a vibe from the people, good people, gamers, not a lot of light. Their lights come from flashes and dots on a screen, manipulated by a joystick. I'm here with Ubu, the tech guru. Yeah, Ubu, the tech guru, yep. Tell I'm us a volunteer at the show. Volunteer down here. Tell yep. us what you do. Midwest Gaming Classic? Uh, well, I basically I help set up uh, Connect the LAN, the local area network for the Halo tournament that's um, at 6 p.m. tonight. So do you personally play a lot of video games? Uh, yes, I do. I play on the Xbox console, uh, 360. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a call, uh, call of Duty guy. Call of Duty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a divide between the Call of Duty and the Halo players, I take? Well, I mean, heard that. there's some, yes, definitely. I mean, there's, you know, you got your fanboys that are solely Halo or fanboys that are solely Call of Duty. I'm I don't, you know, whatever game you have fun playing, that's whatever, you know, that's that's what you enjoy, that's fine with me. <laughs> so Ubu the Tech Guru, if there's one thing we need to see here at the Midwest Gaming Classic, what would it be? I would have to say the, uh, the uh, just the, the museum. You know, you basically get to see the progression of technology over the, over, you know, from the 70s to each of the different decades to, uh, you know, where gaming has really come. Thank well, thanks you. for your time. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm here with Kevin, who just got scrubbed out versus yours truly in a match of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. So Kevin, how long have you been playing video games? Uh, since about five, six years old. I used to have a regular NES. Mm -hmm. Got it for my birthday one year, and the rest is history. The rest is history. The rest is history. You know, I just keep moving on as new, new systems come out. Mm -hmm. I start playing games, and I still play games to this day. You know, they're a lot of fun. I probably have around 200 games. Currently. Small collection, over 200 games. Compared to what a lot of people have talked to me um, about recently, my collection pales in comparison to what they've got. So, but I collect games mainly because I intend to play them. I don't intend to display them. I don't intend to, you know, resell them for profit. I actually intend to play them at some point. Well, thanks for chatting, Kevin. Hopefully, uh, next time, train up a little bit. Yeah, when I get the time. <laughs> Here we are at the museum. I'm really excited. Let's go check it out. We're playing some Atari Jaguar. We are. Now I understand that before this was the Midwest Gaming Classic, this was exclusively a, an Atari Jaguar convention. Yeah, it trade. started 10, 11 years ago uh, as Jagfest. Um, Jagfest started after the console was officially already dead by Atari, um, but a group of fans kind of got together, uh, networked some of the networkable games, um, it's not a real common console, so really about the only way you could do that, you could find somebody with enough to network together, was to do something just for that. The Atari Jaguar, and those who are not familiar, it was... It was, it was Atari's last gasp, basically, as, as we knew it. Um, at that point, they weren't a healthy organization financially. Um, their development teams didn't get a lot of support money-wise. So as a result, not a lot of third-party support. Uh, the support that was there was really underfunded, and they really cut the life short. Didn't really do as much as what they could have done with it. So what would your favorite Jaguar game be? Uh, I don't know. It had a, it had a few really good ports. Uh, NBA Jam, uh, Rayman, um, Doom, which we took out, uh, were really good ports. Uh, they were by big development houses, and they did really well. Um, the great thing about Jaguar is after it was officially canceled by Atari, they released all the rights to it. So it's got a really healthy homebrew scene. So it would be open source now? It's open source. It's officially open source. Uh, all the encryption codes have been released uh, by what's left of Atari. Um, and with the CD drive add-on, you know, it's, it's really inexpensive to burn uh, homebrews to CD. Hmm. Well, thanks for talking with us today. Absolutely. So I'm here with Matt, otherwise known as Footmeat Skull, on the internet, and we're waiting in line to play some Street Fighter Cross Tekken. 
Now, you do tournaments in town. Yeah, I run uh, monthly tournaments at Romines, 6125 South 27th Street. So generally, these tournaments are just for fighter games, right? Right, strictly fighting games. So why do you, why do you put on the tournaments? What um, just because, you know, I've always been interested in fighting games and really trying to build on the competitive scene in Milwaukee and, uh, you know, trying to get people out and into the games. So how long have you been into fighters? Um, I've been playing since I was about, like, 12, and I'm 32 now, so about 20 years. <laughs> and then what draws you to the fighter genre? Um, just like the head-to-head -head competition, you know, it's, it's really fun to, you know, just kind of sit down next to your opponent and try to outsmart them. Right, you you're know, right and, there next yeah, to them. Mm -hmm. just, you know. One-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, head-to-head. Well, thanks for talking with yeah, us, man. Thank you. So I'm here with Aaron, one of the vendors here at the Midwest yeah. Gaming Classic, and we were selling, uh, it's like soda we have. We have all kinds of unique stuff. It's uh, We try and find the unique, the crazy, the weird, the unexpected. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of the, the real common stuff. We have the Cokes and the Pepsis and all that fun mm -hmm. stuff, but we'd like to include just some just some real oddball stuff that mm -hmm. people haven't tried before. And Sorry, just Aaron, great. are you personally a gamer yourself? Uh, a little bit. I'm more into the pinballs. More of a pinball. Okay. Just myself. Yeah. But, uh, but I grew up with Genesis uh, and, mm -hmm. and some of the younger, or the older stuff. <laughs> so, what would be your favorite game if you had one? Uh, actually, I'd like it if they had a stand up Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> a stand up Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> that was always my favorite. That was, uh, I love that one. Sega Genesis. <laughs> yes. Old yes. game. Uh, yes. Yeah, that looks classic. intimidating. Oh, yes. Almost as classic as some of these delicious <laughs> club sodas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Yes. Well, it was nice talking with Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. So I'm here with Johnny. We just got done playing some Typing of the Dead. Thank God. How would you describe that game, Johnny? Interesting. It's uh, quite a diversion from your regular standard game, but. Mm -hmm. It uh, teaches you a lot about typing. About typing. And zombies. <laughs> so it, it plays like other types of games. Like what, It's based on... It's, uh, the House of the Dead series. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just released another one uh, on a PS3, I believe, that used to be a Wii exclusive. But it's so different that you still have to use a typewriter. You, know? you have to type every word out. So have you ever played that game before? I think I played uh, a demo on the PC, but it's weird for the Dreamcast right. home console have the, have the with the keyboard. keyboard. It's like, wow. So what brings you to the Midwest Gaming Classic today? This is such an awesome event. I wish this was every weekend, you know? It's just a nice gathering of uh, people that appreciate uh, video games mm -hmm. and the culture behind it, you know? The, the artwork, the style, and the fun, you know? So how would you describe gaming culture? Uh, I think it's growing because a uh, wonderful thing about uh, gaming culture, for this example, it uh, helps you adjust to new technology with an entertainment factor to it. So what would gaming culture be? I guess it's uh, tomorrow, you know, the future, you know. That's what uh, iPhones and te televisions and everything else is mm -hmm. becoming. Well, well thanks, yeah, thank John. You, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> I can assure you, we only scratched the surface with the Midwest Gaming Classic. The Midwest Gaming Classic comes to Brookfield every year in the month of April. Check it out. My next video is a continuation of a web series I started years ago with my friend Luke Butters. Cooking with Les Boutères is a continuation of a web series that was once only available on YouTube. We've switched over to high definition and my friend Luke and I have a few interesting dishes to show you and that are easy to make, and I hope you enjoy them. I really hope you enjoy them. I really hope you enjoy these dishes that Luke and I made. Bonjour, and welcome to a brand new edition of Cooking with Les Boutères. Uh, we've been gone for a while, but we're back, and... That's I right. We have been gone for a while, almost two years. Yeah, may, some might call it almost three. Actually, but, I think it was three years. Yeah, yeah. We were shooting this on a cell phone, and now we're, we're back. We're in high definition. Mm -hmm. We're ready for you, Luke, to make us some delicious vegetarian. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, we're going to use some garbanzo beans and a lot of garlic and onions and cilantro. It's going to be awesome. We're going to make falafel, hummus, and some tzatziki sauce. You can stuff that into a pita, it's gonna be great. So Luke, tell me a little bit about these ingredients. All right, we've got very few ingredients for this. We have some garlic, and we've got some cilantro. 
I chopped this up real coarse just because we're gonna put it in the food processor anyway. We've got some lemon for lemon juice, and then we've got Kalamato olives and some garbanzo beans. And then Are we, the olives pitted? I really don't want to bite into an olive pit. Uh, no, these have all been painstakingly removed by hand. You removed and, those? Uh, no, a small child probably did. I wouldn't doubt it. We bought them at the store. You really don't know who or who is or what is pitting these olives. Let's hope it was a machine. I hope a piece of cold steel mm -hmm. went into the olive to remove the pit, but we just don't know. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll take the grocery store's word for it. They're pitted Kalamata olives. We're making hummus today, and that typically requires tahini. So we'll be adding that to our recipe. Luke, what is tahini? Uh, tahini is ground up sesame seeds, kind of like a peanut butter, but sesame seed. Okay, it's interesting, and that's Mediterranean. Uh, yes. And it adds a lot of flavor? It does. All right, well, then I, I will take your word for it. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Yes, open sesame. Right, we are putting garbanzo beans in now. How many? Uh, I'm gonna do about a cup and a half because actually like a cup. A cup, okay. Yep, I'm just gonna do a cup because I got this little food processor. It is very tiny, but that's fine, we'll make do. So mm -hmm. you have your garbanzo beans. Yes. Got and then what else? Uh, we've got our, let's start off, Kalamata olives. So we'll put these in here. Okay. And then I'll put the uh, cilantro in here. And the cilantro is gonna give it a nice herby, oh, yeah. kind of a cilantro type flavor, earthy and nice. Earthy, nice, fresh, great, great aromatics, taste nice great. Nice little green color as well. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got our garlic. Okay. Because what is hummus without garlic? That's true, I've heard that before. Uh-huh. <laughs> and onions. And then our squeezed lemon juice. And the lemon juice is a little bit of an acid. Mm-hmm. A little lemony flavor, a little acid. We'll add that. And, and then how much olive oil do you use? As much as needed. It's kind of an eyeball thing? Yep. Okay. Let's just call it, let's just say quarter cup. Okay, and if you need more, you'll just use more. Yep. Lock it in place and grind. I'm back in Greece now. I'm hanging out on the med. And now look, now see the top, we have a few stragglers, so what are you gonna do? Yep. To uh, add more olive oil. All right, I'm on my last ingredient right now, which is the tahini. And I add this last because I want to make sure everything already tastes good because this is going to be a nice, subtle, solid flavor that I'm adding to it. I see. So you want to make sure you have all the other flavors right before you add the tahini, the sesame seeds. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's going to be strong and just want it a little bit. Just okay. a little. I'm going with one and a half of these. And you can, if you like the taste, you can always add it more or less. Exactly. It's totally based on preference, to personal preference. Mm hmm Yep, don't worry about it. No recipe is wrote in stone. Great. So we just mix it a little bit more and we're ready. Yep. Chisel away at the stone. Here is our Kalamato olive hummus done, completed. We will dish this up and then we're gonna move on to the next one. Now it's time for the tzatziki sauce. So what is tzatziki sauce, Luke? It's that sauce that you get with like gyros or other Greek sort of foods. They have, it at a, they have it at a lot of Greek restaurants. Yeah, yeah, they do. It's all over the place and it's usually awesome. It's a cucumber sauce. Yeah, it's cucumber and then yogurt and lemon juice and pieces of lemon and cilantro and garlic. That's what we're putting in it today. Okay, it's pretty easy to make. Yeah, it's real easy. You need a bowl, ingredients, and a spoon. Okay, great, let's see it. Okay, so here we have yogurt. We've got about a cup and a half or so of yogurt right here. We've got non-fat right here. You can use whatever you want. What kind of, is it, what kind of yogurt? Uh, Greek yogurt, actually. So we're gonna try to make it as Greek as possible. Mm-hmm, stick with the theme. Yeah. 
Good to hear. Yeah. Next. And then we've got our cucumber sauce, or our cucumbers. And I chopped these up real finely and then dabbed them up a bit. Somebody, some people like to uh, uh, press all of the excess water out of there, but uh, I just dabbed it up. We'll yeah, see how it goes. we want that cucumber flavor. Exactly. It's awesome. It's great. It's refreshing. I enjoy it. You enjoy it. And that's, we're the ones who are going to eat it. 73% mm -hmm. of the population actually enjoys it. I will accept that fact. Great. So let's see. What do we do? We just mix it all? Yep, just okay. mix it. So we'll mix this up. Cucumber. Cucumber followed by also awesome cilantro. Okay. And then our pieces of lemon. So so those are chunk, chunked up, little chopped up pieces of lemon. Yep. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Okay, good. And then uh, we also got garlic right here. This is about half of a big clove. Okay. Chop that up nice and thin, real chopped up. So um, back to the lemon question. The answer to your question, what is little bits of lemon parts? Um, uh, I didn't ask it, I'm sure somebody did. So you can answer it, I'll let you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, basically, the little lemon parts, pieces of lemon, I cut them into wedges like this. Uh, okay. And take the seeds out. Yep. Just kinda use your little fingers and take the little seeds out. Okay. And then start cutting out the tasty part of the lemon. And just chop that out. You'll see this in some other recipes, but I like it in here too. I see. And then I like to take the middle out, that little piece of uh, white tissue right there. Fruit tissue. Fruit tissue, sure. Yep. Take that out. That's and how I would refer to it. Mm-hmm. And then just chop that up real nice. Yeah. Give it a little turn, chop it both ways. I see. And then you're also getting all the juice from this too. And it's just chopped up and you will definitely taste the difference between this and just plain old lemon juice. I'll take your word for it. I can't wait to try it. And it, then, is there anything else to this process? Uh, no. Great. We're done. Stir it? Yep, stir. I guess if somebody wanted to, somebody could add salt. And pepper. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do that. Nope. Some people might also add dill. We're not adding dill. Not, I've, se I've no. seen dill in a lot of tzatzikis. We're not adding it. Mm -hmm. We don't like it. We think this is just fine as is. So this you is, stir it up. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty real awesome right here. It looks absolutely delicious. Yep. We want it in the refrigerator for a little bit. Yep. What was that? Two minutes? We're done. Great. Now on to the next one. What's our next dish? Uh, falafels. Come back for falafel? Mm-hmm, yes. Be right back. Great. Fridge. Okay, third recipe of the night. Let's get it started. I it, can't wait to, for you to finish it. I'm, uh, hung, I'm hungry. Me too. Let's okay. get it done. Great. Less talking, more doing. Good. So, uh, to start off with, we're going to use garbanzo beans. Okay. Carrots, scallions, onions, garlic, and then we're also going to use some of the tahini sauce. And then that's pretty good for, you know, a basic falafel. Even if you don't have the tahini, it's still gonna be really good. But I'm also gonna add a few spices that are gonna make it really awesome. And you, those are just your personal preference. Somebody at home wants to put one of their favorite spices in, go for it. Yeah, sure, why not? Cinnamon, a little, little cinnamon sugar. Sure, yeah, I, you know, that was the candy falafel. That was the craziest spice I could think of off the top of my head. It is pretty crazy. I don't think about that very much. Those two. I wouldn't either. Let's go. All right. Spices we have. We've got cumin seed. We've got cayenne pepper, ground turmeric, ground ginger, and paprika. And then also salt and pepper to taste. Terrific. So we just blend them all up. Yeah. That's the first step. We're going to use this thing again. Same as the hummus, different ingredients, different preparation after we blended it. Yep, and we'll also be using some olive oil. I'll do about the same amount of garbanzo beans as for the hummus, so about cup, cup and a half or so. Okay. As to not overload our food processor. Then got a lot of unchopped cilantro. Okay. Got maybe a half a cup of 
diced carrots. And I've never had falafel, knowing that there was carrots in it, but I thought it would taste good. So I think so too. I think they're gonna add a little sweetness that I'll, that we'll both enjoy. Yeah. And yeah, feel free to add anything that you have laying around in your kitchen. Maybe you have to use up a few vegetables, toss them in. And then we've got garlic, our green onions, aka scallions, and finally our regular onion. And then just barely fit in there, don't they? Yep, just barely fitting again. We're adding our spices now, and I'm actually going to leave the cumin seed until the very end because I like to leave it as whole as possible. I just like the flavor that the whole cumin seed has. So let's go ahead and add everything else. Okay. And we've got our red cayenne pepper. This stuff gets hot pretty quick. So um, if you don't like hot stuff, don't put a lot in. I but, see you have just a very little bit on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but took the cap off. Uh, still not very much at all. But we should probably put a little bit more in just for good measure. Or if someone uh, in your house doesn't like spicy food and you don't want them to eat your food, spice it up. Okay. And then we've got ground turmeric. So we'll give a few shakes to that. There's an extra shake. That'll give it a nice color. Oh yeah, and it smells awesome. And ground ginger also smells awesome. So we'll put that on here and the aroma is gonna be really great. You're gonna taste that. And paprika, a little bit more heat. Yeah, yeah that's enough heat and add some olive oil. Get these to bind together real nice, hopefully. And I'm gonna let this blend together for a little bit and then I'll add the breadcrumbs if we need them. Okay. We are now lastly adding our tahini. And we're adding that last Y. So that we got the recipe right before we put in the tahini. And because it's a strong flavor. Because it's that strong, bold flavor. And we love it. And we love it. Great, so we just mix Subtly. that up. We just mix that up and it'll be good. Yep, sounds right. I'm all done with the food processor part of the falafel. It's a little bit too loose, too runny that is. Because we're gonna we're gonna take it out, we're gonna make little balls and we're gonna fry them. Exactly. But it's a little too loose to stick into balls, so you're gonna use what? Well, um, as I said before, breadcrumbs. But to the kitchen's chagrin, I only have oatmeal today, and it'll work. Okay. Yep. Why? It's gonna absorb some moisture, and it'll act as a binder. It's good. You know, they make oatmeal cookies and stuff. It okay. sticks together. That makes sense. It works. Good. Yeah. I'm using peanut oil today, and we're going to heat that up in a cast iron skillet up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will be the optimum cooking temperature. So try to keep your cooking oil at 350 as close as you can throughout the process. And then I put four in at a time, and those are easy to monitor and flip over, and you also don't lose that much heat as you're cooking it. So it's really easy to control it with uh, putting four in at a time and then you wanna wait until it's golden brown and just give it a little flip over and make sure that you get all the sides completely cooked. And when you think that they might be done, uh, just flip them over a little bit and check that all sides are nice and golden brown. And if they are, take them on out. We've completed all three of our recipes. We've got our falafels done, our tzatziki sauce, and our kalabato hummus. We have everything plated up here, ready to eat. Luke, it looks absolutely delicious. I'm very, very proud of you. Congratulations. Do you have anything to say for your efforts? C'était très bien. Even though we didn't eat anything on camera, I can assure you that everything Luke and I prepared was very tasty. Our final video tonight is a video that my friend Jeff Van Driel and I conceived while we were bored. That's right, we were bored and Jeff wanted to cut his hair and this is what happened. Most days I feel blessed when I wake up in the morning to have such a thick, beautiful head of hair. At my age, that's something I can't take for granted. But one morning I woke up and came to the realization my hair, my thick, beautiful hair, had taken on a life of its own. It was long, knotted up, and itched like an open sore. I realized then it was time for a haircut. 
but haircuts aren't something people just get. In a way, haircuts are like the ancient oriental martial arts. I spent hours paging through fashion magazines and Eastern religious texts until my research finally led me into the depths of my own soul. There I had to ask myself the difficult questions. Who am I? Where do I want this haircut to take me? What is my haircut trying to achieve? What kind of shampoo should I use? There's one thing I've noticed about haircuts. It's that the first cut always hurts the most. It's like that first leap of faith where your fears meet your future in a whirlwind of chaos. And all you do is watch your hair as it drifts slowly towards the floor. For a moment I felt empty, but there was also a sense of relief there. I remember thinking to myself, there's no turning back now. And with each cut, I took a moment a moment to remember the great hairdos, the great hairdos I'll never do again. And I could feel, I could feel the weight of life just falling from my shoulders. By the time I was on my final cuts, I couldn't help but think of all the great wigs and hats I could wear. I felt a cool breeze on my ears it's been a long time since I could feel a cool breeze. And now I can finally see how bright my future will be without all this hair in my eyes. Jeff and I had a lot of fun making that video. We take haircuts very seriously. I'd like to thank everybody for watching tonight. Thank you for tuning in to channel 36.1. Thank you for pressing power on the remote control of your television, and thank you for tuning in till the end. Enjoy the rest of student operations, and remember, celebrate existence.